Hey there ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Travis Bowman and today we're going to have a little discussion about this instrument here in my lap which is called the harp guitar. Uh, now long story short, this harp guitar, it's been around since the, the late 1800s I believe and um, it's one of the most beautiful instruments that there is out there. I get a lot of questions about the harp guitar and as far as, you know, how do you play it, what's the first steps you should take, uh, what is it, that kind of thing. So I figured I would take a, a little bit of time to explain all that. There's really only one source that you need to check out, and uh, you need to find a guy. His name is Greg Minder. He's got a website. I'll link it in the description below. This guy is absolutely crazy about the harp guitar. He's so fond of the history of it. He's got a museum with nothing but a bunch of harp guitars in it. If you have questions about the harp guitar, that needs to be your one and only stop, for sure. So what is... A harp guitar. Well, it's obviously a guitar. And it's normally tuned in standard tuning, although like any other instrument, you can tune it in alter tunings if you want to. Um, but the appeal for this specific instrument is, of course, these floating bass strings that you have along this giant arm here. Now, uh, there's several different ways that you can tune it, which adds the allure of the instrument overall. There's so many possibilities that you can unlock with having these extra six bass strings here, but um, there's a, a few different schools of, uh, of string gauges and tuning. Again, check out Greg Miner's website for more information on that. Uh, but the two most popular seem to be either the Stephen Bennett tuning or the Muriel Anderson tuning. Uh, Stephen Bennett tuning is what I've been using for the majority of my time playing the, uh, the harp guitar, and it's my most preferred tuning. And as a result of that, for the remainder of this video, I will be using those uh, string gauges and the Stephen Bennett tuning and variations of that. So let's go ahead and take a look at that tuning. Uh, the guitar, just standard tuning, like always. Uh, so from the top string down, we've got a G, A, B, C, D, and then another G. So it's almost kind of like a, a major scale, G major scale. Now the great thing about this is that, as I mentioned before, you can change the tuning kind of on the fly. So I've got two G's here. If I wanted to change this last string to an F sharp, I definitely could. I've done it many times. I could take my lowest sub bass string here, I could tune it down to an E maybe, or an F if I wanted to, I like a B down to B flat, C up to C sharp. You can really kind of customize it depending on what kind of music that you're really wanting to play. Uh, the harp guitar is so customizable with, with those tunings. You can really find a tuning that will work for you to play in all sorts of different keys and styles. Okay, so one of the big questions that I get about uh, the harp guitar in general is, is it hard to play? Um, it's kind of a loaded question. It depends on how you want to play it. And much like the guitar, you know, if you want to play just campfire songs, or if you just want to be a singer-songwriter kind of thing, or just cover other people's songs, then you just... That level of skill is achieved by a lot of people. You know, you can just strum the chords and sing the song if that's what you want to do. Uh, you know, you've got people that want to play all these uh, really nice metal arpeggios and stuff on the electric guitar. That takes another degree of skill. And then fingerstyle stuff. another degree of skill so it depends on where you're at but you can really apply all of those different skills with this instrument you don't have to learn how to play it a specific way that's the great thing about it so for example if I was going to strum let, let's say I'm, I'm playing a, a strumming singing song in C then a G then an E minor just for an example so uh, I can do that if I just play a C note and then of course just an open E down here for an E minor. That's just a random example that I came up with. So you can pick these strings individually just to give you a little extra oomph with your bass if you want to. If you want to get more complicated into it, there's a lot of things that you can do with these sub bass strings instead of just, you know, picking them to give you an extra bass push to replace your bass player in your band. So if we're getting into like a little bit of finger style stuff, you don't have to use your pick to come up there and pick the note, you can just reach up there with your thumb, like that. So let's talk about the very few things that set this instrument apart from a regular guitar. 
Uh, obviously, we've got these bass strings here, but let's see what we can do with those. Uh, you've got harmonics. And uh, you'll notice that I've labeled these harmonic locations with a sharpie. I stole this idea from Muriel Anderson. It's a fantastic idea because now I never have an excuse to miss one of these. It's a very uh, popular technique made famous by Lenny Bro and then uh, amplified by Tommy Emanuel. It's harmonics. You know, you can pick those like normal, but you can do those one-handed. So I'm going to place my index finger over the fret that the harmonic is on, in this case the 12th fret, and I'm going to use my thumb back behind it to kind of pick it. So I'm going to take that same technique and apply it to the sub bass strings. So you see how much fun this is already. And we haven't even really played a song or anything. The really cool part about the harp guitar is that no matter what you play on the on the guitar neck, because the harp guitar is such a natural, reverb-rich instrument, these strings are going to sympathize with whatever it is that you're playing on the guitar neck. So I'll give you an example. Uh, let's start with an E minor. Move it down. So now let's get into more of the intermediate or advanced ways of playing the harp guitar. Um, you've got these bass strings, like I've mentioned, and they're floating. Um, so let's say you had a chord progression that involved a B minor going into a C major. Pretty common. So if we're going to add those bass strings... So I did something that was really subtle that you might not have noticed, switching from B minor to C major right there. And we're about to talk about right hand string stopping. This is a technique that's used a lot by Michael Hedges, uh, especially in his harp guitar compositions as well as his uh, just regular six string guitar compositions. But there's a reason that we need to do this. So if I'm going to play a B, going to a C, it doesn't really work because these two notes aren't really agreeing with each other don't work that way. So in order to get the desired effect of switching to B minor and C, you've got to mute the strings. And there's a lot of different ways to go about doing this. You can use your palm just like you palm mute here. You have to be kind of strategic with it though. That's going to take some getting used to. So if we're talking about these first three strings, you have to. I'm just going to go G, A, B. You have to mute the string pretty much exactly at the point when you're about to play the next one. So if you'll notice, my thumb is coming down on that G as I'm playing the A. Same thing as I follow through the rest of the strings.
So I try to do a little bit of everything there, just strumming and then finger picking and then playing some of these harmonics, maybe even doing a little bit of that right hand string stopping. Those are basically your starting points if you're looking into getting a harp guitar because they're a lot more accessible, I won't say exactly cheap, but they are more accessible than they used to be about 10 years ago. I really wanted to make this video for people that are either a harp guitar beginner or thinking about getting one. So after all that, uh, I'd like to talk about my history with the instrument and, and where I started. In the early days of YouTube, 2006, 2007, 2008, um, I, that's where I discovered fingerstyle guitar music, specifically percussive fingerstyle guitar music. And I saw a video by a guy named Stephen Bennett. He was playing this weird instrument that looked uh, very similar to this. Okay. I got this guitar in 2015, but um, I got my first one in uh, 2013. I got it on eBay for 200, and, or it was about 550 bucks shipped uh, back in the day, and uh, I had a lot of fun with it. And it was a it was a really nice uh, introduction to to playing the harp guitar, but you know it didn't have a truss rod in it, and it really wasn't built to last. So around 2014, after I won the Ernie Ball Acoustic Prodigy contest. Uh, dire Harp Guitars here in Southern California actually reached out to me. So I got this instrument in about 2015 from Dire Harp Guitars. This is definitely one of my prized possessions. Uh, I've, I've taken this all over the world with me. I've, I've played this at the Harp Guitar Gathering, which is realistically where most of these signatures come from. So I was just thinking about the future, and it's such a small community of people that really enjoy and really respect and love and play the Harp Guitar. And I wanted to try to uh, preserve that as much as I could, so I just told everybody at the gathering, you know, sign this. It doesn't matter if you're a famous guitar player or not. You know, we're a really tight community, and it's so nice to be able to preserve this, you know, in, in history. That people actually love this instrument, and they play it, and there's a decent following for it. So there's a couple of signatures on here from uh, guitar players that really inspired me to pick up the instrument in the first place. We've got Stephen Bennett way up here. Muriel Anderson's on here somewhere. There she is right there. And then Don Alder. And way down here we've got uh, Andy McKee and Don Ross is right there. And uh, Steve Klein who built the uh, electric harp guitar for Michael Hedges back in the day. He signed it for me. Um, just there's, there's so many of them. Uh, Hiro Takai, a great Japanese uh, guitar player who was a fantastic harp guitar player. He played an instrument called the Koto harp guitar, which uh, Koto is a Japanese instrument. So imagine something like this, but with an extra set of strings on it. I highly recommend you, you check him out. Unfortunately, he passed away. Uh, he was a fantastic musician, and I'm so glad to have his signature uh, preserved on this instrument to have with me for the rest of time, pretty much. So I'll put the link in the description below to a bunch of links that you should check out for the Harp Guitar Gathering, Greg Miner's website. You can check out Stephen Bennett, Muriel Anderson, and, and like I said, I really wanted to make this video for the beginner harp guitar players, or for the people that are really curious about the instrument and not sure if you really want to pull the trigger on it yet. Um, this is the kind of thing that you're going to get into. So it's an extremely approachable instrument. It just takes, like anything else, it, it, it takes muscle memory and practice to get used to it, but um, it's, it's a fantastic instrument. It, it's one of those things where it just drew me in and I, I couldn't ever stop thinking about it and I still haven't. And I'm so glad to own this instrument. So at this time I'd like to mention that I do teach uh, for fingerstyle guitar and harp guitar. And I teach over the internet, over Zoom or Skype, whichever you prefer. So if you're interested in that, feel free to send me an email in the link below in the description. And I wish you the best of luck on all your musical journeys. Uh, with the harp guitar and thank you guys so much for watching be sure to like and subscribe and comment tell me what you think about the harp guitar and i'll see you guys in the next video